Nobody. All shit is cooking and that's not a deal. Time to put all of the cards on the table. I'm my own boss and I do what I say so. Oh, that's your bitch with the piss on the nibble. Don't know how to fuck, but she got some good head though. And she got connects like Google and cable. Fuck around, put that little chick on the payroll. Rub her on, cause that little chick. Hello, but baby, I'm not trying to be romantic. All the money ain't got time for bitches or they nagging. Lizzie Smith and Wesson be my legal weapon. Dusky, Van Trees Christ, who was on the drill scene in Chicago, Illinois, died at the early age of 25. He was featured on season one, episode 15 of Final Hours. Final Hour is a hashtag docudrama series that captures surreal events in a person's life, so viewers may have a reality check. Also featured on my channel is a hashtag docu-series, Final Hour Dialogue, on which future OTF New School and Zach TV won in the first air on November 13th, 2019. The docu-series Final Hour Dialogue is a documentary type setting for viewers to have a more interpersonal look into the sociology aspect of the causes and effects. Dusky is now featured on Backdoor as there is an inside situation that nobody has heard of and is not featured on any other channel. This info comes straight from the trenches. This new series is called Backdoor. However, does not necessarily mean someone from the inside backdoored him. Just means it's out of the norm of how things are done. Dusky's was out of the norm. Okay, so I'm finna take y'all down the block to 56, 57, 58 in Wabash and Michigan. This is authentic, no cap, and all fact. People on the block love Dusky. He was very creative. He would break out at random times doing the WAP dance. He created that. Soon as he started to WAP, then everybody started to rock. If you don't remember the WAP, here it is. Not only did he create the WAP dance here in Chicago, he also had everybody on Jigamo. Jigamo means to pop mids. In case you've been living under a rock, mids are pyramid shaped ecstasy pills. Dusky was a pill popper and he stayed teed up off X pills. When it came to ecstasy pills, Dusky had a kill death ratio of 3.0 and a 10.0 win loss ratio. He was a beast. Dusky really enjoyed popping mids. Him and Ruger made it on the radio in 2012 from a song called Settle Down with Future Ruger and Dusky. In some circles, MOB Dusky had more clout than FBG Duck, which is why STL kept Dusky in his songs. MOB Dusky featured on Final Hour, where his death was captured along with MOB Scrap, who was a good friend of Dusky. MOB Scrap was shot and killed on June 7th, 2014. Scrap was gunned down in an alley between Waybash and Michigan. Scrap was shot in the head and Moochie was shot in the face, but survived. 
Immediately after the hit, Shield members sped off west toward 56 and Shields, which is Dodge City, north of Travis World. Roro, known as Dodge City, is a group of MCs. Travis World are GDs on 57th and 58th between Princeton and Normal. Dodge City from Garfield Boulevard to 56th between Wallace and Princeton. 56 and Shields is three blocks from 56 and Waybash where MOB Scrap was killed. At the time when MOB Scrap was murdered, MOB Dusky was on house arrest and couldn't slide for Scrap. He was being monitored by his PO, having to wear a bracelet. It was well known on the streets that MOB would commit the acts that STL rapped about. Dusky lived what he rapped about, which led to him going to prison. Dusky, facing time in prison, hired a lawyer and started to fight his case. This led to him catching OTF Dirk at court and punching him in the face. OTF Dirk and Dusky began to bang in court where it was a straight up brawl. Dusky was later found guilty on his case and was deemed a menace by his actions on the street. Dusky was sent to prison he served his time and came home on house arrest. While Dusky was on house arrest, MOB Scrap was killed. MOB Dusky got word that Scrap was killed and cut off his bracelet and slid on Roro, which is Dodge City, which is members for 56 and Shields. Dusky slid the first time and nobody was outside, so he slid a few more times with MOB members. They were sliding for MOB scrap. Dusky and MOB members slid on Dodge City. They slid down 56 and Shields, 56 and Stewart, 56 and Normal, and 57 to Shields. Here is a map on MOB sliding to Dodge City. As you can see, they are very close to each other and very easy to go in and out. Dusky P.O. issued a warrant for Dusky for violating conditions of his release from prison and was found by the Chicago gang unit in which they found a weapon on him and sentenced him back to prison. Dusky was sent back to prison on weapon charges and parole violation. Dusky eventually served the remainder of his sentence came home and turned savage. Dusky started going hard on the rap scene and opened up a mid spot on 56th in Michigan. He started selling X pills at the spot. Dusky started selling pyramid shaped ecstasy pills as he was a convicted felon and getting a nine to five wasn't attractive. After Dusky opened up the mids joint, all the guys started hanging with him. The block, members from 051, Geo, STL, and Jaro. It was the most popular place to be on 56 with Dusky now. They named it Mids Michigan. Even 051 Driller hung there and brought Mids as well. Driller even stated in 51 Dead Ops that I really slide through the six every day in reference to Ducey's mid spot on 56th in Michigan. Ducey started overdoing mids and started to become violent and erratic. Added to the fact he lost MOB Scrap, MOB Bebe, MOB E-Boy, and MOB Monster. Monster was killed by 12 in the alley on 58 in Wabash. Bebe died in front of the house off the block. 
E-Boy was killed by THF 06 in front of Ice Liquor Store on 57th and State on MOB land. THF Gucci was caught on tape and was sent to prison. This all was taking a heavy toll on Dusky, which caused him to use more and more. At this time, older members of MOB started to come home from prison and started to see the younger guys were wild and unorthodox. The older members told MOB Dusky he needed to slow down and chill as he had too much going on and was making the block hot. MOB Big Homies told Dusky he bringing all the other sets to the block and clicking up isn't what we do. Chill out shorty, they stated. We don't even know these dudes you bringing over here. MOB started to get on Dusky every day about his homeboys and them making the block hot. And they stated they were very loud. Also, Dusky knew homies from Jaro and 051 Young Money were highly disrespectful to the older members of MOB, which is why they were checking Dusky. Dusky was ignoring them and that he felt that he can kind of do what he really wanted to do and he didn't really care what others had to say. situation with Dusky's death and FDG Wooski shooting at Dusky's funeral, it's time to clear that up. It all started to go bad for Dusky when an older MOB member brother started hanging with Dusky and MOB scrap gang members. He ended up stealing the gun from Dusky now and dipped. Dusky caught up with him and violated him along with members from 051 and Jaro. After he was violated by Dusky, 051 and Jaro, he got up and went and told the big homie in MOB. This pissed the big homie off, so he marched down to Dusky. He was angry as it wouldn't have been a problem to violate him if he stayed within MOB. However, jumping him with another gang isn't a violation. He caught Dusky and they began to argue, which led to shots being let off on the block. The older member of MOB went and got a family member and started shooting at members of 051 and Scrap Gang on the block. This is the feud and not the rumor beef with 600 that will see Dusky shot along with his girlfriend on 56th in Michigan. The younger guys found out that Dusky was gunned down by other members and they left MOB Scrap Gang and became only Scrap Gang. 600 Waldo tweeted dissing Dusky's death and MOB immediately slid on 600, just so happened to spot 600 Waldo walking through the lot after getting off the bus on 63rd. One thing younger members started to learn is that obedience is better than sacrifice. MOB and Scrap Gang started a cold war against each other and MOB stayed away from the youngest and gave them 56 in Michigan while the older took 58 in Wabash. At Dusky's funeral, there was a situation with FBG Wooski. Let's finish that as well. Dusky's funeral was on 92nd and Cottage Grove in the trenches. Police should have known that Dusky was a popular high-ranking member of the BDK movement. 
Dusky's funeral took place on D-Block territory, which are BDs. While preparing for the funeral, three members from O-Block got ready to slide down 92nd. Same people who killed Can't Get Right from STL on 63rd and Vernon also slid on Dusky's funeral and started shooting at the GDs at the funeral. Three O-Block members pulled up on STL, 051 Young Money, and Scrap Game and started firing. FBG fired back, so did 051 Young Money and Scrap Game. After shots went off, Wooski was accidentally struck in the head by a ricocheting bullet. Soon after O Block pulled off, STL, 051 Young Money, and Scrap Gang dipped out. Later on that night, Scrap Gang and Draw City slid on O Block. It is a blessing that between Dusky's funeral and the shooting on O Block, nobody was killed. Even with all this going on, Scrap Gang still wants their get back for Dusky from the back door hit. Scrap Gang still wants serious get back for Dusky's death. The rest of the story, featured on Killer KI, coming soon.